The Joker from The Dark Knight, Blofeld from James Bond's He Only Lived Twice, and that guy from the Carlsberg ads who was in Casino Royale. Darth Vader and Kylo Ren from Star Wars. Scar from The Lion King. They're all bad guys, and they all have scars on their faces. But in an era where everything is problematic and offensive, that's not okay anymore. The British Film Institute is now no longer going to fund films that have bad guys with facial disfigurements. I'm not even joking. The British Film Institute, an organization that is dedicated to supporting and funding British-made films, has announced that it will no longer fund films featuring facially scarred villains, according to The Telegraph. The BFI is backing the hashtag I am not your villain campaign from Changing Faces, a British charity that provides advice, support, and psychosocial services to children, young people, and adults living with marks, scars, or conditions that contribute to a visible difference. In supporting the campaign, the BFI is hoping to help remove the stigma of facial disfigurement and sees film as a great place for change. Of course, because arts institutes like these can't resist the urge to virtue signal to the public about how inclusive and tolerant they are. This is the kind of thing you start to do when you've run out of stuff to be woke about. When you can't find anything to be offended about on behalf of other people. You just make stuff up. You know, whenever I've seen a person in real life with a facial scar or disfigurement of some kind, it's strange, but I've never thought to myself, well, that person must be evil and want to take over the world. This is another example of moral busybody outrage nonsense coming from activists with no talent, nothing to offer, and nothing better to do with their time. But they've discovered over the years that if they spend a lot of time complaining about everything and trying to pressure organizations to change based on some subjective sense of moral superiority, they can make it seem as if they're contributing something positive to our society. Film is a catalyst for change, and that is why we are committing to not having negative representations depicted through scars or facial difference in films we fund. Ben Roberts, the BFI's deputy CEO, said in a statement, It's astonishing to think that films have used visible difference as a shorthand for villainy so often and for so long. The time has come for this to stop. So what's next? Villains with beards or goatees, right? They're next on the chopping block, I suppose, because it stigmatizes people with facial hair. What about bald villains? There's plenty of those. What about villains with British accents? That's a trope that's been used for decades to great Shakespearean dramatic effect. Careful now, audiences might start to associate British accents with fictitious bad guy stereotypes. And what about evil characters who've lost a limb and make use of a hook or some kind of prosthesis, right? They're missing a hand or an arm or something. That could be offensive and that could marginalize people who are disabled or missing a limb, right? And what about actors who are already scarred in real life? Will they no longer be allowed to be cast as villains if they choose to audition for that role? Filmmakers are now no longer free to dream, create and build their own fictional characters, stories and worlds without having to comply to a set of rules dictated to them by progressive orthodoxy. There's a set of ideological limitations and frameworks that they're now being forced to adhere to. Otherwise, they won't get their projects greenlit. These frameworks often include diversity quotas, as we know. In this case, it's gotten so ridiculous that filmmakers are no longer free to create villainous characters with scars on their faces. They've lost the artistic freedom to express themselves due to this increasing drive for conformity and censorship of ideas. Even if you don't care about cliched James Bond-style villains with facial scars, it's the idea that artists can no longer do what they want with their own creations. That should concern you. Do these people think that the general public lack the ability to discern reality from fantasy that they might actually look upon people with facial scars as megnomaniacal tyrants who sit in massive chairs stroking cats and demanding a water tank with sharks with laser beams attached to their heads? You know, I have one simple request, and that is to have sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. Now, evidently, my cycloptic colleague informs me that that can't be done. 